In this video, we are going to talk about actual concrete ways you can save money. But remember though, if you do not currently have the right mindset and determination, then these practical tips aren't going to work because you have to get your mind in the right place. There is a quote by Dave Ramsey that says that money is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. It is what you do, not what you know. So let's get started. Grab a pen and a paper. And what you're going to do is write down the ones that you are interested in that might you might want to implement in your life to squeeze that dollar. Now, not all of these are going to be for you. Take the ones that you like, write them down. Just because you may not like or agree with another one doesn't mean it's not right for someone else. You can just leave those behind. Now we are going to go rapid fire. Let's go. I hope you have your pen and paper ready. Number one is to switch providers. For some reason, people tend to be loyal to corporations and they stick around with the same maybe cell phone or internet provider forever. Yes, this can be somewhat time consuming, researching it, getting on the phone, maybe in an hour or two, but isn't that hour or two worth your time if you can save, I don't know, $100 a month, that's $1,200 a year? At this point, you're looking at things like cell phone, internet, insurance that you could switch and possibly get a really good deal. The reliability of these corporations is getting very similar to one another where in the you know, near past, they were pretty gaps as far as the least expensive ones more versus the more expensive ones. But right now with everything in the market, there are more companies out there and they are having to compete with each other, which is good for you. Number two. I want you to download an app on your phone right now. You're gonna pause this video. You're gonna to go to the Google Play Store. You're gonna download the Every Dollar app and you're going to start using it. Now, perhaps you're watching this video and it's not the first of the month. You think, oh, well, it's not the first of the month. I've already spent all this money. That's okay. Go ahead and start working on next month's budget. Go ahead and start plugging in exactly your income, the things that you need to put, check it out, look around the app, start that budget. If you want, continue to scroll around with your you know, money during this month until you get to the first. But on that first day of the next month, you are going to be all in. This is what you're going to do is utilize this app. Brandy, a viewer of mine, recently wrote a comment on a video where I talked about the Every Dollar app that actually reinforces how good it is. She states, Dave Ramsey's Every Dollar app is fantastic. Now listen to her story. It takes a good six months to get used to budgeting. When I started, I was broke. I had to make a sinking fund for paper towels and toilet paper. Now I've been budgeting for about three years and I've paid off all my debt and saved up almost $50,000. That's in three years, everybody. This proves my point. Download this app. I promise you it will work. Number three, set a time limit. Have you ever seen that show back in the day? It was a game show called Supermarket Sweep. I absolutely loved that game show. If you've heard of it, let me know down in the comments below. But why not make this a game? I love a good challenge in my life. It actually is really, really motivational. Set a timer or have a time limit that you are in a store, even a grocery store, and see how quickly you can get finished. The longer you linger, the more likely your fingers are to pick up something that's not on the list. Number four is to keep a clean and organized home. An organized home is an organized mind. An organized mind can easily keep organized finances. A lot of times there is a correlation between an unorganized home and a financial mess. You will see if you were to maybe go into somebody who you know has a financial mess, they may have a really unorganized home. Most of the time, there may be an outlier there. But basically what you need to do is go ahead and organize your home. Use this as a motivation, get things in order, maintain them that way, and watch how that motivation of organization just in your home starts organizing all aspects of your life, including your financial situation. Number five is one I love. Have a food clean out Friday night dinner. This is perfect because at the end of the week, you're tired, you're tired of cooking and you just don't want to do it. You know that you're grocery shopping on Saturday, so you need to clean out the, fi the fridge. Take out everything, put it all on the counter and tell everybody to have fun. Who says that pizza, pickles, and meatloaf don't go together? 
Number six, buy workout gear and clothing at places like Ross, TJ Maxx, and Marshalls. This is where you're going to find the best deals on these. Even secondhand, I haven't really seen a lot of workout gear, but at these places you can get name brand stuff that lasts a long time. I have some zip up athletic jackets that I've had for seven years that still look brand new. Number seven is one small change that could save you a lot of money, and that is always taking your lunch and your snacks. If you eat out often, you may see that fast food or even places like Panera with drive throughs are extremely expensive nowadays. Not that they weren't before, but they've gone up just like everybody else. You can spend 10 to $20 just getting a meal for one person at Panera. Think about these numbers when you add them up over time. Let's say you ate out for a $15 meal three times a week for one year. That is $2,340 or $195 a month. That's a lot of money. Let's lower it a bit. Let's say you ate out three times a week for $10 a month or $10 a meal three times a week for one year. That is actually $1,560 or $130 a month. That's a pretty big chunk of money. Number eight, if you automate your payments, you could save a lot of money. I'll tell you about one. My cell phone company offers a $10 discount if you set your payment up on auto pay. The one thing that you need to remember here though is to make sure there is a cushion in your bank account so you do not go and overdraft. The other thing that it does is you can't forget a payment and be late on it and end up having to spend an hour, hour and a half on the phone asking if that fee can be waived. Number nine, buy real cheap food. And by that, I mean real food that is cheap. There are so many foods that get left behind as far as talking about that are super inexpensive. You don't have to go and buy all these, you know, boxed foods with preservatives or expensive foods that cost a lot of money. You could save a lot. Things like apples, carrots, lettuce, beans, oats, rice, potatoes, eggs. You can take these items and combine them with some herbs and some seasonings and make delicious meals out of them. And they don't have to cost a lot. We don't have to have elaborate meals and dinners. We could have really good whole foods that are inexpensive. Number 10 is to drive carefully. This not only saves you on gas, but it can save you from getting expensive speeding tickets. Perhaps it can save you from getting in an accident where it might be your fault. And this will save you in the long run too, because even if it's something like a fender bender and there's not a lot of damage, when that is put on that VIN number's car history, if you when you go to try to sell that car, it's going to have a loss in value because it has been in an accident even if there was little to no damage. Number 11, if you don't ask, you can't save. Ask if there are any discounts. Many companies have discounts for students, first responders, seniors, military, nurses, etc. It isn't embarrassing to ask. The embarrassing part is not asking and losing out on a lot of savings. Number 12, I was recently having a conversation about saving money and there was a talk about Aldi and something came about up about this person said, I don't eat store brand foods. And I thought, wait, excuse me, you don't eat store brand foods, but you're talking about how grocery bills are so expensive, but you don't eat store brand foods. So yeah, no judgment here, but you're, I'm kind of left scratching my head. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's the ration, rational, rationalization or the critical thinking to imagine that there aren't 30 different manufacturing plants that make the 30 different spaghetti sauces, and it can't possibly be that much of a difference in uh, flavor, really. I know this game. When I first married my husband and I grew up on non-name brand, let me tell you, it was whatever was the least expensive. I would bring home these things after going shopping and my husband would go, ooh, what is that? I'd say, uh, that's barbecue sauce or, or that's ketchup. Well, it didn't take him long to adjust his taste buds. And I have a feeling, it, well, a thought that a lot of it, it's mental. When you really get down to it, you kind of think it tastes differently. Now, that's not the case all the time. Certainly, there are things that you can tell a big difference in the brand versus a non-name brand. But 90% of the time, especially with spaghetti cup sauce, ketchup, mustard, barbecue sauce, those things taste pretty darn similar. Number 13, create a wants list. If you come across something that you really want, 
put it on that list. Maybe right now you can't get it within your budget, but perhaps in the next month or two, you could save up to get it and you've got it on that list. You'll really know that's what one thing you wanted. Or if somebody comes across and says, hey, is there something that you would like for your birthday? You have a list that you can look at really quickly of something you really wanted other than being caught in the moment and going, uh, uh, I really don't know and end up getting a whole big plethora of shower gels from Bath and Body Works that you didn't want. Number 14 is to check the tire pressure on your car. Tires lose about one PSI per month. So you need to know what the recommended PSI or pressure is for your car. And that's usually on the inside of your door where the door meets the car. You can't see it when it's closed on the inside or the outside. It's that little panel. And from there, you want to make sure that they are inflated properly. When you don't have the right inflation or pressure, tire pressure in your car, it does cost you in gas mileage and tire longevity. Number 15 is to rotate your streaming subscriptions. I'm seeing more and more people talk about this lately. Whereas some people might have, let's say, Netflix and Amazon Prime TV and HBO and Stars and this one and this one and this one, you can't watch them all at one time. Some smart people have figured out to game the system and they'll have Netflix for about a month or two until they get through those shows that they want. They'll cancel it. They'll move on to their HBO. They'll go through the entire series of their shows that's one of the benefit of having the entire series on and then they'll move on to the next one and they rotate it from there by the time they get back around the next season is out on the platform that they're watching and you save a ton of money doing this number 16 is to shop clearance online for the next season. There is one thing that I cannot stand and it's going into a store with a whole bunch of different clothing and sitting there sorting through. That is not worth my time. This is my favorite go-to hack, especially for my daughter's clothing because she's always growing out of something and the next season is coming. Go to the store that you like, go to the clearance, part of the website is what I'm talking about. Go to filter. From here, you can filter down to find exactly what you want to look at. If you're going there and you need to look at short sleeve t-shirts, you can go in and filter by t-shirt, by short sleeve, by size, and get the exact ones that you can see. There may be 20 or 30 versus 5,500. Use that filter button for your benefit to get this next size up when it's super, super on sale, especially if it's off season. Number 17 is to literally leave home without it. If you have a problem with credit cards, you can't not use them. You can't pay them off every month. Then you need to leave them behind if you are not making any progress. Put them in a freezer. If you're not ready to cut them up, put them in a freezer, put them in a safe, put them on that top shelf in the kitchen, the cabinet, you know, in the way back that I don't know why it's even there because I can't get to it on a regular basis without a four foot stool, put it back there take with you just your cash and your debit card. At that point, you're only allowed to spend what's in your bank account. It really changes your mindset and you're extremely intentional about what you buy. Number 18 is going to save you gas, mileage on your car, and time by batching your errands. If you're going to a specific area, doing everything you need to do in that area at that time, picking something up on your way home or dropping it off on your way in, this really does make sense if you put it down in notes. Obviously, it's something that's not urgent. If you need to drop something at the UPS store, for instance, write it down. That way you know the next time you go out that direction, you can do that thing. You can pick up that item at that store or run that errand. This recently happened when I made a purchase online. I got a pair of shoes in, they didn't fit, they were too wide for my foot. I had gotten them on sale during a holiday. Well, I needed to return them rather than mail them in. There's a store on my route on the way home. So put them in my car. I knew I could just drop them off on the way. That makes useful time out of my commute. I'm not going out of my way or using time to leave my house when I don't need to. Number 19 is talking about gas again, because to be honest, it's a big item in my budget. I don't live near a big city, so I'm about 40 minutes from a big city. I have to drive many different places. So this is something I take into account. So for you, if you do have a vehicle and you're, everything's not completely convenient to you, take into consideration the gas mileage it gets and 
what type of gas it takes. When I was researching my last vehicle for two years, one of the things that stopped me from buying one vehicle was that it only took premium gas, which it was a kind of a mid-sized car, not a luxury brand, a regular one, which really stumped me at that point. When gas prices are lower or not you know, spiking, this might not be at the top of your mind when you're looking at a new vehicle, but if you buy that vehicle and you don't think about it and you end up with a gas guzzler, at some point during the ownership of that car, gas prices are gonna spike again and that's gonna put your monthly budget out of whack. Number 20 is to start thinking now about DIY holiday gifts. A lot of my viewers are extremely crafty people. Even one sent me one time a pillowcase that she handmade and my daughter to this day still uses that pillowcase. It was adorable and beautifully constructed. Go ahead and start making a list if you are one of these people or you're looking to experiment in doing DIY gifts this year. Make a list of the items that you want. If you have a Hobby Lobby near you or any hobby store, Hobby Lobby in particular rotates their sales where they'll have 40 to 50% off different areas at different weeks. So you can plan your trips for when they do have that discount to pick up those items that you need to make your crafts. As I get older, the more I love homemade gifts because there is just such a time and spent and more of a thoughtfulness put into them. Number 21 is to purchase items in bulk when it makes sense. Usually you want these to be non-perishable items or items that have a longer shelf life. Number 22, it's getting to the point where it's not worth your time to spend time actually clipping physical coupons. A lot of coupons these days are tied to your member card and you go through an app that you have on your phone with the membership and you clip the coupons and attaches to that card. I think this all had to come to a head after the extreme couponing and the companies figured it out. But most coupons in the weekly newspaper now are a waste. They also are things that aren't necessarily even good for you or they are expensive name brands that even with the coupon discount isn't less expensive than the extremely versatile qualified equal non-name brand and you'll have to end up purchasing more. A lot of them say you have to purchase two or more to get one dollar off which you don't need at this time. Number 23 is to sell items you no longer need. If you are really in a pinch and I heard a lot of this in the last comments on my video several people who just couldn't make headway with saving but if you are looking to try to get that emergency fund together or pay off this bill that really needs to be paid immediately, one of the quickest ways you can make quick cash is by selling the things you have that you no longer want or need in your house. So go through your house and see if there's anything that you can offload that you don't need that it would be okay to get rid of right now. Now, one thing to keep in mind though is you're gonna to have to sell these things at a, at a big discount. When you go to buy something at a store for $50, you can go, oh, I can't sell this thing for $10. I spent $50 on it. Well, unfortunately for you, as soon as you walked out of the store with that thing, it lost most of its value. You have to remove the emotion from it. Don't sell it way under what you know you could get, but oftentimes if there's any emotion connected, then you're going to try to get way more than it's worth and really be set back because it isn't going to sell. Number 24 is to get rid of the gym membership if you aren't using it, and I'm talking at least weekly or more than once, and work out at home. I found an article from finder.com that said Americans spend $397 million on unused gym memberships annually. That is a huge amount of money. Perhaps you decided in January to join a gym and it's almost the end of the summer, into the fall, and you still don't go anymore, but you're still paying for it. Get rid of that. You can do that same intention to find something you love within your home or surrounding neighborhood that doesn't cost anything. Number 25, water, water, water. This is not only good for you, <laughs> we're talking about a lot of things that are good for you, and it's weird to think that saving money is also a lot of things that are good for you. Think about that, correlate those two things together. But think about the cost of soda. I mean, a soda out is maybe what, at least $2, if not a lot more. And I recently looked on my online grocery store to see how much a 12 pack of Coca-Cola was. It was $9.99. Now this used to be me. I used to go to the grocery store weekly and I would get 
two to three 12 packs of soda. It would even not be the name brand. Not only was this not good for me, it was costing us a lot of money. Now my body doesn't even like all that sugar, but it actually takes me deciding in my brain to say no no more soda. I am not drinking soda any longer. Yeah, there will be a cravings here or there. I will hear the fizzy sound and I'll go, oh yeah, I really want that. But what I found is as you drink more and more water, what will happen is your body will start to go, when you have like tea or lemonade or something that's sweet, it will go, I, really, I, I need some water. It starts to crave it. So start changing those cravings by quitting those bad behaviors and it will save you a ton of money. Number 26 is to enjoy your home. There are so many things that I can find to do around my house and spend an entire weekend not even needing to go somewhere. This is why I kind of shake my head when I meet people who are never home. They are literally always gone from the time they wake up to the time they go to bed. They are never there. And obviously doing that leads to spending a lot of money. If you want to do a no spend weekend, then you probably need to try to stay home as much as possible. They end up buying these big houses to impress other people, but they're never there. The only thing that actually lives there is all the stuff that they end up buying for it. Number 27 is to watch movies at home, actively have really cool movie nights. You turn the lights down, the lights off, you shut the shutters, you have pillows all over the floor and blankets, you get some yummy food and snacks, maybe get a pizza to bake, grab some snacks from the dollar store and rent a movie. Recently there was a movie that came out that my daughter and I were very excited to see. We even thought about just biting the bullet and doing a beginning of summer fun thing and going to watching it in the watch it in the movie theater. Well we never got around to it, which I'm thankful for because we recently saw it on one of our streaming platforms and we're able to get it for a cost of less than one ticket. So we now have already watched it two times and really gotten our money worth out of it and had a better time. Number 28 is a hard one. <laughs> I get it. I understand why. Don't buy those pre-made muffins or cookies or baked goods when you walk in a store. They have them close to the front for a reason. That smell just comes up and gets you. You don't even have to make these things fresh. You can go buy those little packets of them, add a few pantry staples like eggs, and you save a ton of money. I went on my grocery store's website just to get an idea for you, and it said that a four count of muffins in the bakery was $5.99 blueberry muffins. I found a blueberry muffin mix also on the same site, not even on sale for $1.25. I bet you I can get about six to eight jumbo muffins out of that muffin mix. Number 29 is a challenge. Write down every single purchase you make for 30 days. Make this a challenge. You don't even have to do the budget if you don't want to. You're not ready yet. You're not ready to, to pull the trigger and pull do that every dollar app, which is free. Just write everything down. At the end of the month, after you've written everything down, you've done the challenge, you wrote it all down, you don't even have to analyze it anytime soon, no judgments here, just write it down. Spend about 30 minutes actually now analyzing it, looking at it, highlighting those expenses that weren't necessary or worthwhile to you. This is a very impactful exercise to do. The ones you can sit back and say, yeah, I didn't need to do that. Now add them up. Yep, go ahead. Here you go, pick your jaw up off the floor. That's what's going to happen. But the thing here is once you acknowledge that something, it makes it easier to change. You have to acknowledge what's happening. And even just the practice of knowing that you have to write these expenses down makes you more intentional with your purchases. Number 30 is to eat out of your pantry for one month. I remember hearing about this challenge from Jordan Page with Fun, Cheap, or Free. She has a blog and a YouTube channel, I think, still. And she called it Shelf Timber. She did it during September. And so she has a humongous family. And this is where basically they plan all of their meals about what they currently have in their pantry, what they have in their deep freezer, and they legitimately use basically all of it. Now they do have a small amount of money that they take to the grocery store weekly to use to get things like fresh eggs or milk or fruits, but it's very, very minimal. And during that month, you can imagine they save a ton of money utilizing what only what they have on hand. 
I think this is a great challenge because it resets your habits. It helps you to clean out stuff that may expire over a certain amount of time. Every single year you do this and you develop a great habit of being more intentional about seeing what you have first before you develop your meal plan and go out grocery shopping. Alternatively, number 31 is to stock up on grocery items when they are on sale, maybe for a particular month. Speaking again of Jordan Page from Fun Cheaper Free, she called October stock October. Creative, right? Basically, she spent the entire month having a gap in her budget between what she spent and what she budgeted and used that gap to help expand her pantry and build it back up. She built extra or made extras of many meals so that she could freeze them in the deep freezer. I love using this tip all the time. I love having a budget buffer for grocery shopping weekly, having something between five or $10 between what you're expended, expected to spend and what you can spend to see if maybe there's an item that's on deep discount that you could stock up on. And if you get two, three or four of them, you use them a lot, it's not gonna bust the budget because you've got that bus budget buster in there, the budget, budget buffer in there. Number 32 is to use less. Use less everywhere. Less shampoo, less laundry detergent, less cleaning spray, less water, less salad dressing. Hear me out. Usually the recommended amount that we use for shampoo, usually the recommended amount is less than we actually use. People just squirt a big old glob and it's really only a little bit you need. Now, alternatively, you can try to use less detergent than what is recommended. See if it still gets your clothes as clean. Do you need to use that much? Not only does using too much laundry detergent cost you money, but it also can help break, helps break down your clothes faster, which we don't want. Most people also don't read the back of cleaning sprays. They don't see that it says to let it sit for a few minutes. They spray it and they wipe it off immediately, which is completely useless. You have to let it sit and do its job. I like to also take salad dressing, add a little bit of water to it. So I'll portion it out, put a little bit in a little cup, add a little bit of water, stir it around. And what it does is makes it go further too. But when I put it on my salad, it helps it more evenly cover all of the salad as well. I use less. Number 33, when grocery shopping, always compare unit prices. I rarely even look at the actual prices of anything any longer. I have trained my eye to go to that unit price. Stores will try to grab your attention as well with sale prices. And then if you look closely enough though, you'll see that the item that is a different ounce that's not on sale has a lower unit price than the item that is on sale at its sale unit price price. So if you use that much ounce, like it's a bigger ounce and you save more and you know you'll use it, grab that. But focusing in on those unit prices, make your eye see that is going to save you a lot of money. Number 34, if you are out of stain remover, just use a little bit of laundry detergent. Laundry detergent and stain removers are usually made of similar ingredients. All you need to do is take a little bit of your laundry detergent, put it on the stain, let it sit for about five minutes, and then put it in your wash. Number 35, try using less expensive sources of protein in place of meats at meals. Things like beans, lentils, and eggs are extremely versatile and they are way less expensive. You can try just substituting one meal a week where you take out meat and add one of these less expensive protein sources. There are so many good recipes on Pinterest that I have found. I use chickpeas to make crab cakes. I use uh, chickpeas to make chicken salad. It tastes so good because of all those other ingredients and chickpeas really don't have a taste. To me, chicken doesn't really have a taste too much either. It's very similar. And then also you can go on there and see, look up Sloppy Joe's, make lentils, mix them with Sloppy Joe sauce. It tastes really, really good. There are so many, my husband has really been blown away with what I found to place in place of meat and save a lot of money with these less expensive protein sources. Number 36 is to free up a payment. You need to first know what your payments are. You need to write them all down. You need to have exactly how much they are. Let's say you have a car payment and it's $500 a month. Wouldn't it be nice to dream and imagine that that $500 could stay in your bank account and that you wouldn't have to send it off every month on a car that's four or five years old that you've had for four or five years. 
perhaps you have some extra margin in your paycheck, meaning you have a little bit of space from your expenses to your income, and usually you just blow it on dinners out or some clothes or whatever, and you think, you know what? I could take that money and add it to the principal of my car and get it paid off quickly. Simply imagining not giving that money away Imagine it like you would imagine what you might do with the lottery if you want it. What would I do if I had $500 left over in my account and it didn't have to go here? That might be enough motivation for you to kick that debt out and to make the sacrifice to get it paid off. Contrary to what you might have heard, contrary to what culture wants to say to us, we do not have to have a monthly car payment. It is not a requirement. Number 37. Do not shop when you are hungry, sad, or sick. You will have very little willpower to overcome those temptations. I can tell you one time when I spend way too much money is if I go to the grocery store and I am not feeling good. I just want to put everything that I could possibly think in my cart. It doesn't matter. I don't have the slightest bit of willpower to see which one's the better deal. I put it all in there and I'm just ready to get home. It doesn't matter. I, I, I don't care. Whatever is going to make me feel better. So if at all possible, especially if you're sick, especially for me, if I can send somebody in place to pick up the things that I need, then the better. Then I will end up way better and not having a humongous bill because I was completely out of my mind and just bought everything. Number 38 might seem very obvious, but it's one of those things that I had to experience again to wake myself up from. But it's that cutting back on refined sugar is not just for health issues. <laughs> cutting back on refined sugar saves you money from eating a whole bunch of junk the rest of the day as well. I have a confession to make. I love donuts. I, loved, I love glazed donuts. Huge. Okay. I recently got back on my health kick. And what I realized was when I don't have those donuts to eat, then I don't snack and eat bad, salty, sugary snacks. I don't crave these empty calories, which are also money, throughout the day. I am perfectly full with my morning protein shake and my protein throughout the day, having a little bit maybe of string cheese and then my salad for lunch. It is really odd. <laughs> I know it's probably obvious, but you end up eating less if you don't start it out with those refined sugars. Number 39, when you get a raise, save it. When you get a windfall of money that you weren't already expecting, use it to pay off debt or save it. Don't automatically go and spend it. Now, if you are at a financial place where it is just extra money, you are doing fine, well, okay. I'm talking to the people who have certain financial goals that they are working to get to. Use that windfall, use that raise, use that extra bonus that you weren't expecting. Don't go out and blow it because you're going to regret it. Number 40, stop being afraid of confrontation. I recently heard a story about somebody who was told one price that their bill would be. They showed up and the price was over $100 more. They did not ask questions. They went ahead and paid it. Come to find out, the place had done something that that person had not approved to be done. But instead of asking the question at they ta the time, they'd already given their money and they thought about it later. They were afraid of that confrontation because we are so now disconnected from each other. We are afraid of a little bit of question asking in order to get more clarification when one person told us one thing and it ends up being another. You have to get past that, past that comfort zone and do the thing that feels uncomfortable or you're going to lose a lot of money. Number 41, sit down and map out big purchases. Now, big purchase is relative to you. What may be one big purchase to one person is different in the amount for another. You needed to see what's coming up. I can give you examples. Tires, roof, kids fall clothing, wardrobe, the things that you might need to save for. You really need to put a plan in place and a map of how you're gonna get there. So you need to save X amount here and then maybe go shopping at this point because there's gonna be a sale. You need to sit down and start doing some strategic critical thinking to save yourself money in the long run. Number 42, don't start off big if you can't. So many people get hung up on the percentages of what they should be saving per 10%. You should be saving 15%. And rather than doing it because they don't have the room to do it, 
They don't even do any. They just give up and move on. Don't go that way. Start by saving. Just do maybe $10 a paycheck. Do that for a couple of months, then go up to $15 a paycheck. Do a little bit because a little bit is going to lead to a lot more. So start out there. Don't think if, if this is new to you, saving, you haven't done it before, that it's gonna come easy. Don't expect it to be easy. Don't expect that if you haven't been living within your means and you've been living on credit, that it's not going to take a little bit of effort. Number 43 is to take care of yourself. This is eat healthier. This is do some sort of exercise to move your body. Get adequate sleep. Floss, go to the dentist regularly. Not taking care of yourself costs a lot. Medical bills are stupid expensive. Number 44 saves so much money, hundreds of dollars a month. I promise you. I will keep saying it until those of you who don't want to do it end up deciding it's probably a good idea. And that is meal planning. But I don't want to meal plan. I don't want to be that rigid. Okay, that's fine. Don't. Then don't whine to anybody, no one, about how, how high the grocery bill is, how much money you're spending on food, how much your family seems to be wasting. Meal planning is the answer to this. It is so simple. Two things to do, super simple. Write down 10 to 15 meals that are your family favorites that you guys eat on repeat, everybody loves. You know you can do it. Throw it together in no time. Have a blank calendar. You can use a calendar that you have on your wall. You can print a blank calendar that you can find. Just do a Google search. Take the list, plug the list into the days that you eat meals. Number 45, along with this, plan those meals that you have based on what is currently in your pantry and your store sales. So when you decide to go and put those meals on that plan, if you have three meals on this list that you have items for already, put those on that week that you're going to eat that week. If you see something's on super sale, you go, oh, look at that. We need to pick that up. We can put that on Wednesday because that's a meal we love and we can tie it back to a sale. Number 46, at some point, it might not just be your expenses, it might be your income. You could be in a situation where you are not making a lot of money. You are not making the money that you are worth. You might have to find a better paying job. And it might just be for a season. It might be that you've been stuck and loyal to a company for 10 years and you, they just aren't treating you as well as you are loyal to them but it might take acknowledging that and realizing that, yeah, it's gonna be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to go to a job interview. It's uncomfortable to be rejected. It's uncomfortable to start at a new place where you don't know a lot of people, but you know what's really also uncomfortable? Not having enough money to pay your bills or to get where you want to get in life. Number 47, delete shopping apps, social media apps, and news apps from your phone. All three of these will make you spend money. Obviously the shopping apps, the social media apps from comparison, you're also spending time and wasting it by scrolling through. You can still do it on your computer if you want, but you are wasting time and time is money and you cannot replenish it. You cannot replenish time. You only get so much here on earth. And the other thing is news apps. These news articles are making you doomsday think the, you have to realize that fear sells. We look for fear more than we look for good. These news articles are engaged and the headline will be misleading just to get you to click on it. And then you've also spent time and now you start feeling sad about the situation, about your generation, about everything. You feel like, you know, the, the money system is going to come down. Everything's going to explode. Take a step back and breathe. Having this right here and this thing that you are addicted to because the phone is that for you is hard it, and you have to reduce that friction. And part of doing that is to delete those apps off of your phone. Number 48, you could save a huge chunk of money if you have one of these things. Do you currently have a storage unit? Yes? No? If you do, and perhaps you're using it because you're in temporary housing, you're living abroad, it's grandma's things and we're not really sure where grandma, if she's gonna come back home yet or if she's gonna stay at the assisted living place. I get that. But if you are keeping this thing full of stuff, 
what are you thinking? Because are you really going to put that stuff anywhere or is it just sitting there? Is the stuff that's in there even worth the amount of money you're spending to rent that thing yearly? I, I'm astonished at the amount of storage unit places and the amount of money these places make. And I bet you that the majority of them are full of things that people just are afraid to get rid of or they think they can sell for more but they can't end up doing it and they're paying to store it. Number 49, quit one bad habit at a time. This can make a big difference in your spending. Pick one and quit that one. Eventually you can do another one, but focus on one at a time. Now this could be your daily coffee run. This could be buying lottery tickets every week or stopping and getting a Slurpee every time you go and get gas. Pick that one thing that you always spend money on. You know it's not good for you, but you just haven't been able to kick that habit. Pick one of those and just quit it. Try it for a week, try it for two weeks, try it for a month and see what happens. Number 50, whatever you're doing right now, make do with what you have. See what you can put together when you're first starting out. I talk about this one, especially regarding YouTube, which I started over five years ago. And I started with using my laundry baskets turned upside down, had the camera sitting on top of it, and complete natural light. Flash forward to today, and I've gone through several light kits, different cameras, different tripods. As I've gone, grown through it, I realized what I needed because I took that time, I started out with what I had, and I upgraded as I went along. If you got through all 50 of these tips, let me know in the comments down below just stop in and say hi as well. I love hearing from you. Let me know how you're doing. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to click on that like button. It's the little thumbs up icon down there. YouTube really likes that. It helps to push this video out to other people who are searching for it. And also subscribe to the channel. That way you see when I post another video and you can come back and watch that one as well.